The sun is releasing massive spurts of energy that are headed directly toward Earth. And if they hit us, it could change everything. Power grids could be wiped out. Our communications could cease to exist. Humanity might be put back into the Stone Age. All because of a solar storm. But what makes them so powerful? How is it possible for something like this to happen in 2024? And why are they so dangerous? This is What If, and here's what would happen if a solar storm hit Earth in 2024. So how could something like this happen anyway? Well, it all starts with the cycle of our sun. Known as the solar cycle, this is an 11-year stretch in which the sun's solar activity increases and decreases. The cycle starts with just a few sunspots raging about and creating mass amounts of energy, and then five or six years later, it reaches its peak with anywhere from 100 to 200 sunspots. Then it ramps back down for the last five years and we start another solar cycle. Currently, we're in our 25th cycle since we began tracking the sun in 1755. And unfortunately for us, scientists predict that the sunspots will peak in 2024. This means there's a higher chance that a solar storm will occur. Now, before we get to our solar storm, what are sunspots anyway? Well, they're cooler and darker areas of the sun that are created by a strong magnetic field. They're not directly responsible for creating solar flares, but it just so happens that flares are most common in these sunspots due to their high magnetic activity. The magnetic field lines can become twisted and tangled near certain parts of the sun, and they can suddenly snap and realign, which creates a massive burst of energy. This can result in a solar storm. So now that the sun has released this massive amount of energy, what will happen to you on Earth? Well, when a solar storm occurs, you won't notice it right away. That's because it takes a few minutes before it reaches Earth. Yeah, hurry up and get in your last couple of YouTube videos because once this storm hits, everything changes. Now, the first thing you might notice is that more and more auroras will start popping up worldwide. This typically happens when charged particles from the solar storm interact with the Earth's atmosphere. Although these sights in the sky look beautiful, the good parts about a solar flare end there. Due to the effect on our geomagnetic field, most of our technology would stop working. Things like satellites, GPS, and radio transmissions would become incredibly spotty. Your cell phone likely wouldn't be able to pick up any signal, and communications worldwide would start to fade out or become less reliable. But that would only be if we were affected by a few solar flares. This is an entire solar storm we're talking about here. These are comprised of multiple attacks by the sun on the Earth. But before we get to that, people on Earth aren't the only ones affected by this. Astronauts up in space would also suffer the consequences. Their situation could be a lot worse. The sun would be blasting them with intense solar radiation, and if they're not in a specially shielded area on the spaceship, a solar storm could prove deadly. They could get radiation sickness, as well as develop cancer later on. The solar storm could also destroy their ability to communicate with their mission control, and vice versa. This is just what would happen on the first day of the solar storm, but several days later, as you're still having trouble getting cell reception, another massive attack would come from the sun. A phenomenon known as a coronal mass ejection, or CME for short, would be coming right for Earth. You know, voicing all these videos and checking all the scripts for these episodes, I end up sitting around a lot, and I'm not as active as I'd like to be, but that all changed with the sponsor of today's video, Copilot. You know, I don't know if you can tell, I've never really worked out before. I don't know what it was, maybe it was the new year, but Copilot was the exact motivation I needed. A real trainer to keep me honest. 
They're great. They set me up with a trainer. Josh is my guy. Shout out, Josh. You can text and call your trainer regularly, and they build you various workouts. I started with just three a week, but I hope someday to go to five if I can. Josh checks in with me every day to make sure I've done my workout and that I'm feeling good. The other good thing I like about it is, is that I can do it at home. I can do it at the gym too, but I don't have a gym membership. So Josh and I talked about what kind of equipment I have at the house, two dumbbells, and he built me the workouts around that. I like that I never have to think about what kind of exercises I should be doing. Everything is planned for me by my coach. Now, if you want to make fitness a bigger part of your life, well, give Copilot a try. Check the link in the description and get 14 days of free personalized fitness. A CME is a massive explosion of plasma and electromagnetic radiation from the sun. This mass ejection can cause violent geomagnetic storms that interfere with Earth's magnetic field. If this were to happen, Earth as we know it could change for good. Just look at what happened in 1859. A solar storm known as the Carrington event occurred. It disrupted and flat out destroyed telegraph communications. Luckily, in this case, Earth was able to recover relatively quickly from what today would be a cataclysmic event. Telegraph communications were a simple technology. Telegraph lines could be repaired quickly and things went back to normal. But what would happen today? Our lives are so much more reliant on technology and we have so much more of it. This time, the tech interruptions wouldn't just stop with the odd glitch or spotty signal. Instead, a solar storm could be so bad that it would make all technology stop working. Yeah, the intense levels of electromagnetic radiation could wipe out entire power grids and communication systems. Even something as simple as buying groceries with your credit card would be impossible. We're talking about a full-on global blackout. If you were in an airplane, the cockpit could lose communication with air traffic control and not know where to go. Or with the intense radiation levels hitting Earth, the plane could fall entirely. The same goes for subways and trains. They could come to a complete stop in their tracks. This would cause catastrophes all around the world. Planes falling from the sky, trains crashing. Now, not having power at your house would be the least of the world's worries. Because entire cities, including all hospitals, would be without power. No power means it's harder or impossible to treat certain patients. The lack of power and technology malfunctions could cause millions of people to die. The solar flares and CMEs might last anywhere from a couple of hours to a few days, but that doesn't mean this event would be over just yet. Because of all the damage to our power grids, communications, and technology, Earth would take some time to recover. It might be weeks or months before we get back to normal. We'd have to rebuild parts of our power grids and communication systems. And depending on the parts needed, well, this might take another several weeks and take into account the lack of communication that the world would suffer. I mean, talking to your neighbors is one thing, but how would you communicate with another city or country? Global supply chains would collapse. This would delay things even further. But once humanity got all these things sorted, we would rebuild. What once felt like the end of humanity might turn into a simple footnote in Earth's history. The result of a solar storm could be traumatic and life-changing, but humans would live to see another day. So how likely is something like this? Well, it's tough to predict. We can look at the solar cycles and see how many solar flares occur, but there's no telling if they'll hit Earth or not. And although a solar storm could happen, well, keep in mind that even though we're more reliant on technology than ever before, our technology is also more resistant. Communication technology and power grids are built to withstand various types of interference. NASA is also working on technology to help predict and warn us about solar flares. If one is headed our way, well, here's what you can do to prepare. Keep a well-stocked emergency and first aid kit nearby. Like with any natural disaster, it's important to be equipped with first aid equipment, non-perishable food, and water. 
you might want to invest in surge protectors and remember to unplug any electronics if a solar storm occurs. Lastly, look into off-grid power supplies. Back up energy sources like generators or solar panels. Then just wait it out. The world should return to normal. But what if it never did? What if Earth experienced some of the craziest world-ending scenarios ever? Well, that sounds like a story for another What If. Remember that if you want to make fitness a bigger part of your life, then give Copilot a try. Click the link in the description to get 14 days of free personalized fitness.